In this video, I'm going to look at PAG5, which deals with the synthesis of an organic liquid. So the skills covered in the PAG include heating under reflux, distillation, risk assessment, and purification using a separating funnel. So I'm going to use this task here to tease out all of those skills. So we'll have a read through, and then if you want to pause the video, Drop down what you think are the kind of things you need to include and then play on and listen to the kind of things I would say. So imagine you've been asked to plan a synthesis of cyclopentene from cyclopentanol. In the first part of the synthesis, the cyclopentene is heated under reflux with conch phosphoric acid. And then the second part, the reaction mixture then heated under distillation to obtain the crude product. And then finally, the crude product is separated from any impurities. So what you need to do is um, give some details of the apparatus and the experimental method that you should follow for the three steps and outline or give, give an idea of the kind of things you would need to include in a risk assessment um, for the experiments. So some extra information for you, well there's the equation, it's an elimination reaction where the concentrated phosphoric acid takes out a water molecule by removing the OH group and an H from an adjacent carbon, so it could take one of the H's here or here, and where it takes them puts a double bond in its place. So we get cyclopentene and water. And there's the boiling points which you might want to consider certainly for one of the experiments. Um, 139 for cyclopentanol and 44 for cyclopentene. So like I say, pause the video, um, write down what you think and then play on when you're ready. So I'm starting with the risk assessment. Obviously you shouldn't do an experiment before you've considered the risks. So some obvious things to start with. So wear eye protection and lab coat at all times. Dispose of chemicals as directed. And before beginning the practical, we're going to use or we're going to refer to chemical data sheets or hazard sheets or even the internet to identify hazards associated with all of the chemicals involved in the experiment. And then for each chemical, we're going to specify any extra safety precautions other than those in the first two bullet points there that we should um, follow. So I've looked up concentrated phosphoric acid, found out that it's corrosive and can cause burns, and so an extra precaution would be to wear chemical resistant gloves. So like I say, you would do that for all of the chemicals involved. So if we look at part one now, the reflux part, um, I'm taking these from um, a lab sheet that I, I actually do this experiment at college, so don't worry too much about the quantities more interested in the um, technique that we're using, the apparatus that we're choosing. I will show you a diagram for all three parts and we'll, we can look at the apparatus and talk about how it's set up when we see the diagrams. So obviously the first thing we'd do is carefully add the cyclopentanol to a pear-shaped flask or you could use a round bottom flask. Slowly add the concentrated phosphoric acid to the same flask. We're fitting a live big condenser to the flask for reflux, so you'll see what that looks like in a moment when I show you the diagram. Connect the lower rubber tube to the cold water tap, turn on the water, and we're going to heat the mixture, I'm saying to around about 90 degrees C using a water bath, or if you've got one, an electric heating mantle, for around about 10 minutes. So that's what that would look like. So the condenser is in the vertical position for reflux. Water goes in at the bottom and out at the top. That gives more the most efficient cooling of the vapour in, in the inner glass tube. There's your flask, your pear-shaped flask, your reaction mixture. So in this case, it's cyclopentanol and concentrated phosphoric acid and the heat source below. So whatever you choose, water bath or heating mantle. So if we move on to part two now, the distillation part, so I'm saying set up the condenser for distillation and again you'll see the diagram of the apparatus in a moment and we're heating the mixture using a water bath or electric heating mantle at 50 degrees C. 
So why am I saying that? Well, the boiling point of cyclopentane is 44 degrees C. And just think what else is in that flask. We've also got some water in there because that was produced in the reaction. So we certainly don't want that going over if we can avoid it. So if we keep the temperature to around about 50, then the cyclopentene should go over and the other substances in there won't. And obviously we do that until we've got a small quantity of product. So that's what that all looks like. So you can see now we've got the condenser on a slant for distillation. Um, so we've got in the pear-shaped flask, we've now got cyclopentene, we've got phosphoric acid still in there, and we've got water, the product, the other product. So water bath at 50 degrees C. I've put a thermometer in the diagram just to show you that that's a good way of keeping a check on the temperature that's inside the flask. To connect the flask to the condenser we use what's called a still head so that's this curved piece of glassware um, and then to get the um, product or distillate it's really called into the small container there um, this piece of apparatus here is called a receiver and you can see on the diagram there I've just taken this from a lab sheet that I use so we use ice water mixture it wasn't essential for you to say that in this but it's a good idea to have iced water there so when your product collects in there it won't evaporate out because often these are um, quite volatile substances so final part now part three purification using the separating funnel so first of all we're going to pour that distillate into a separating funnel and there may be some water soluble impurities in your product so a good idea to do at this point is add a small amount of distilled water and allow the layers to separate so cyclopentene will be the upper layer because it's less dense than water those impurities will be in the lower aqueous layer and then you would run out that aqueous layer and in this case you would discard it and then you would run out the organic layer and you want to keep that so collect that I'm saying in a small conical flask. Now because there might still be a small trace of water in your product a good idea to do now is add a drying agent so I'm saying add a small amount of calcium chloride actually anhydrous calcium chloride so we're adding that to the flask and swirling and any small traces of water will be absorbed by that and leave the organic product and then the final thing obviously you've got a solid and your liquid cyclopentene in your flask so you would filter and collect your product in a small container if you wanted to further purify your product you would then do what's called a redistillation and you would control the temperature to exactly 44 degrees C and then you know that you're just getting across your um, product that you want. So that's what all that would look like. So there's your organic layer on the top there, aqueous layer on the bottom with the impurities dissolved in there. So you're running that out, so you'd just be left with that. That gets run into the separate container. You put your drying agent in and then um, filter.